Welcome to our 2021 Tracer 200 BHS LE. Starting right in your back bumper here. If you just pull this cap off, reach in a little bit. We got your sewer hose right in here for you. So just take note of those two ears in the adapter here. That's all you'll be hooking it up to your sewer system. And the hose itself, once fully extended, is about 20 feet long. Just stuffing it back in the bumper there just helps keep any sort of stench out of the unit. And then just the cap just kind of presses into place and there you go. In this corner, as well as in each corner of the trailer, you've got your stabilizer jack here. So what they'll do is they'll just come down, contact the ground, give it another turn or so just to firm it up. And they'll just get rid of all that bounce and sway that you got in the unit right now while you're out camping. Right here, you just got a little quick connect for a propane. So if you just pull that dust cap off of there, have that valve in the back closed off. You can push that collar back, quick connect plugs into there. Then you can turn on that flow of propane and fire up a barbecue, whatever you want. With that valve open, it is a safety. You cannot undo that collar. So it just prevents you from pulling something out and leaving propane on, All right? So you turn that valve off, then you can push that collar back, remove whatever you're using and put that dust cap back into place. Down another little ways, we got your sewer connection here. So that cap there, just kind of press in, turn it off, pops on out of there. It's got the same two ears that your sewer hose had. Attach the same way, just press it on, turn it, clicks into place, and there you go. On the left, you got a gray valve. On the right, you got a black. So that black valve is controlling your black tank, which is filled from your toilet. So when you're dumping your tanks, you're going to want to do black first. Once the black's done, we'll come over to gray. Gray is filled from your shower as well as your sinks, so typically cleaner water. We'll dump that last just to help keep that hose as clean as possible. Straight up from there, I've got your short cord connection here. So you just got that little tab in the bottom corner there. It's going to line up with that tab right there. Just kind of press it in, give it a little eighth turn, locks it into place, and then you get the threaded collar in the back there to really lock it down. As you follow that cord back, you'll find a standard 30 amp bend here. Most campsites are going to have that. You can plug straight on in and you're good to go. We do also provide you with a 15 amp adapter. So if you're looking to plug into a standard household outlet, you can do so. Charge your batteries or run your fridge. Right up from there, I've got your exterior shower. So you're going to get a key. It's going to look just like this little guy right there. Stick it on in there, open her up and you get your three foot hose, hot and cold water. So if the dog's out getting muddy, you can spray him off before he gets inside. Just tuck that back away, close her back up. Straight up from there, I've got your city water connection. So that cap just pops on out. You'll get a water hose, plug it into there, turn on the water and that'll pressurize the water lines throughout the unit. Right above your axis, we've got your furnace here. So if you're ever running your furnace, you just want to make sure nothing's blocking that. It does get hot. And down a little ways further. Got your fresh water connection here. So just got that little cap, just turn it, pop it off of there. Take your water hose and stick it into there. Turn on the water and that'll fill up your fresh water tank. You know that tank is full once it starts spitting water out of this little blue vent in the back here. These other water lines, these two to the front, red and blue, low point drains. So you just be opening those up and they'll just drain out your water lines for you. Purpose of that would be for winterization or if you're leaving the trailer for a little while in the summer and you don't want your water going stale, just open them up and drain them all out. And this one on the far right there, that is your freshwater tank drain. So you just open that up, drains out your freshwater tank and there you go. Cable inlet's just right there. So coax cable, just plug on into there, fire up at your TV location. And below that is a solar panel plug-in. So you just take a fear and solar panel, plug it into there, and that'll charge your batteries. Right here, we just got your storage compartment. So in here, I have left your hitch, as well as your weight distribution bars, as well as the owner's manual for that all. And your Bluetooth brake controller. So got all that just tucked away in here for you. Towards the front of the unit, you get this little black box here. So that's housing your battery. As long as you're plugged in through that short cord in the back, through that solar panel on the side, or your seven pin into your tow vehicle, that battery is charging for you. This little flap right here, you just get these two knobs, push them back, open it up. We got access to your propane tank valves here. Standard barbecue style tank. You're just gonna turn this valve to open it up. And there you go. You'll see this little guy there goes green, letting you know the propane's now present. All right, and if it were to go red while you've got a tank open, it's just letting you know that tank's dead. So just flip over to the other side, run off of this tank while you get the other one filled. See, we've got your weight distribution hangers on either side, and then just the standard tongue jack in the front. On the side of the trailer, we've got the other end of your storage compartment. So here's where you have your water hose, as well as that park adapter for you. So your 15 amp end and a 30 amp cable into there. Up on the wall here, you do have a little light so over to the left, I believe that is just a single function. You, you would see on the switch is just a one. And the other side of the switch on the right side is a two, right? So that two is gonna signal dual function, which is gonna be motion sensing to turn on the light. Right? Otherwise on one, that's just gonna be on all the time. And then this jack here is just for running all of your stabilizers. With that light, I can give you a better example once we get inside, it's just the basic rundown of it. Leash latch here, so if you got the dog outside, you can tie him down. Two exterior speakers here, 
GFI fire protected outlet, so if you ever if you want them running something outside, you got the power for it. A little bit of storage right in the back here, right, just either way. And lastly in the back here, you just got your hot water tank. So you just get this little keyway right there, just line that up, pop it on open. All of your controls for turning on your hot water tank are just inside the unit. Before you ever turn it on though, you just want to hit this relief valve right there, make sure that shot of water comes out. A bit of water coming out is just letting you know this tank is full, it's safe to fire it up, you're not going to burn anything out by doing so. Closing it back up and just locking that keyway back down, and there you go. Spare tire as well as a pre-installed mount for a observation or backup camera. And now we'll just make our way inside. So you got your assist handle here, just up 90 degrees, falls into place. Grab the handle of your steps and pull it out. Flip that last stair over. You can open up the door. The door is just on a friction hinge, so it just kind of sits where you, wherever you leave it. Do just keep in mind, your awning arm is right behind it. So if you have your door wide open, you do contact that arm. So you're gonna to wanna to keep it at about 90. Right. When you first get in the side of the unit, you've got your fire extinguisher right inside the entrance there. Standard pull the pin point and shoot. Up top here on the very left, we've got your interior lights. Does all of your ceiling lights here. One in the center here, I believe, is your speaker lights, and the one on the right is your awning light. For your awning itself, you just get that switch down here, press and hold out, and that awning will make its way out. This is where it's really important to make sure that your door is at no more than 90 degrees, because you will run into it with that awning arm. So once that awning's fully extended, you'll just see a little black flap at the end come down, as well as the black of the metal tube, just letting you know you're fully extended there. Whether or not we actually get there today, there it is, perfect. All right, so once you see that tube, you're going to want to stop. If you're to continue extending, it will actually wind itself up backwards, in which case our fabric will be underneath our tube, allowing it to hold water, accelerating the growth of mold and mildew, which of course we don't want. Now if we were to start raining, it's going to be holding some water anyways. So what you can do is just grab either arm front or rear, pull down on it. See that changes the pitch of the awning out at the head, allowing water to then run off. Now if you like that angle better, because it does give you more shade, you can do the same thing with the other arm and get yourself more shade. Before you bring it back in though, you just want to make sure they're both back out straight and fully extended, just so that we're not running the risk of bending anything. And then we can just press and hold in, and that awning will make its way back in. And just another thing to keep in mind with the awning is you, once you get up to about 15-20 kilometers an hour wind, it does just catch it and you do run the risk of bending your arms, so just make sure it comes back in once you get up to about that wind. Alright, so your antenna here, just gonna kind of press up, turn it around, looking for your best signal. Wherever you find it, you can let it fall, it'll stay right there for you. Before you go traveling though, as the little mountain here says, you're just gonna want to rotate it completely and let it fall into place there. And right above your entrance, you do have this one light here, so here's where you can get a better idea of your dual function there. So off to the left, that's your single function, that's just your light turned on. And off to the right, that's your dual function, that'll turn on with motion sensing. Alright, so if we were to hang out in the bathroom for a minute, this light will be off, come back out, it'll find us, it'll turn itself back on. A little closet space here, as well as identical on the other side. You have a GFI protected outlet down there, as well as over here. Okay. For your window or all of your blinds, pretty well just sit where you leave them. Right. For the emergency exit, just pull that red tab to get rid of the screen. Take this handle here, throw it outside, and hop on out. The foot of your bed, if you just pick up like that, you have a little storage compartment there. It's a little stick that will just fit into there to hold it open for you. And oh, that's it for here. So your kitchen here, you get, of course, hot and cold water, mobile head. Right above the sink is a little light there so you can see what you're doing. And then the storage down beneath it, just being mindful of our drains right in the back there. We, of course, don't want to be breaking those. GFI protected outlet, a couple of drawers here. And then right below that, we've got your LP detector. It's propane, so everything there, it'll sit on the floor. This guy will detect it and start going off just like a smoke detector would. Microwave here, standard, just like home. Below that, we've got your range vent to get the fan here. So, of course, propane stove is putting off fumes whenever you're using it, so you want to make sure this fan is on whenever you're using it. You also get a light there. So, for the bifold cover, just up and back. Turn your knob over to a little flame, hit it with a sparker, and she fires right up. Now, the first time you're out at your campsite, the first time you're going camping, this might take a minute to do, just because it's got to clear all the air of the propane lines. It's perfectly normal. Close all that back up. So on the right side here, you get that little light switch, press it up, it's just the knobs, press it down, it'll do the stove as well. Open up the stove, turn that knob over to on the right, that little flame, hit it with a sparker, 
And as she clears the air out of the lines, you can see that pilot light in the back. There we go. Once you get that pilot light going, you just hold the knob in for another couple of seconds and then you can release and it'll hold itself. And then you can turn up to your desired temperature and she fires right up. Once you're done, you can turn it back down just to pilot and it'll hold just the pilot light for you. However, if you're leaving or going traveling, you want to make sure that guy's right off. Close that back up. Down below that, we've got your converter. So just press the top of the center, pops on open. You get all of your breakers down, down the center there. Whenever a breaker breaks, it'll sit in the middle. So just turn it off and then back on. And then on the right side, we've got all of your fuses. If a fuse were to ever pop, you'll get a little red LED right beside it, letting you know exactly which one went. Your fridge here is 12 volt. So you do the little handles here. You just kind of got to press down on them and then you can open them up. Right across the top here, you got your temp selection. And then there's your fridge up top, kind of pressing up on that handle the same way. And then you can open it up. Temp selection right on the back there as well. So, and I guess we'll head into your pantry space here. A little bit of storage there. And then through this door into the bathroom. The light switch is not here, it's just its own light. Again, it's the uh, motion sensing, All right? So we'll put that on two, put that on two. Medicine cabinet here, you do get a little bit of uh, toilet chemical sample. So basically you'd just be taking this bottle here, the entirety of it, and just dumping it down the toilet after your first few uses. Just helps break everything down, keep things that little bit fresher. Hot water tank control here. So on the right, you actually have a little flame down in the bottom there. So we turn that switch on and turn on your hot water tank with propane. If it were to not fire, you'll just get this little red light in the center here, letting you know it hasn't fired. At that point, just off and back on to reset it. And stood right here, you can hear the whir of that flame. We know that hot water tank's good. And off to the left of it, you got that little thunderbolt in the bottom there. It's letting you know you're firing it up on electricity. Hit that switch on, turns on your hot water tank electricity. Monitor panel here in the bottom right, we got your water pump. Turn that switch on, turns on your water pump, drawing out of your fresh water tank to pressurize your lines. Monitor system, we get batteries, so because we're plugged in right now, we're currently C for charging. G would be good, F is fair, and L is low. Fresh tank, as you fill that up, it'll go to third, two-thirds, and full. Same idea for your black and your gray. Hot and cold water at your sink, of course. G if I protect it out, it's right in the side here. Test on the left, reset in the center. For your toilet, just get the little flusher right in the front there. And then in the shower, you get the nice stainless hose, hot and cold water, of course. And then right up above that, we've got your roof vent. So just turn that knob to open it up. And then in the back corner, you get the little switch to turn on the fan. Okay. And then at your bunk area, both bunks are pretty well identical. You got the power outlet up here. And then up on the wall over here, you get that little push button light. The blind up top, and down below, kind of just stuck in the dark, other than having the one light there. You do also have USB charging up on the wall there. And then down below is just kind of a doghouse. Got a little bit of storage down here and then we've got your thermostat in the wall here so just press and hold that power button and she'll fire up all right and then it's going to start from cool all right so that's of course going to run your ac so just select your temperature right there with the arrows your fan speed typically you're going to want to just leave it on that a there for auto auto is going to use the high fan if it's beyond five degrees of its goal temperature when it's within five degrees of that low temperature it'll automatically flip to the low just kind of keep things that little bit quieter for you Unless, of course, you strictly want it to run on low or high, in which case you can select your low or high. With the AC going, you're basically left with two different options. You can have this louver here closed, in which case we're using all of the roof ducting to move our air. Or you can open it up and it just dumps all of its air in the living area here. So when you first get out to your campsite, you're going to just cool off this area as quickly as possible. And then you can close it off and start moving the air throughout. A little unit like this probably won't notice too, too much of a difference, but with it open, it does cool quicker. Hit that mode button after cool, it'll come into heat. So it'll turn off the air conditioner, turn on the furnace. The furnace will be moving its air through all of the kind of portals that you'll see up on the sides. You also have one kind of right by your shower there, behind the toilet. Okay. So the first couple of times you use that furnace, you might get a little bit of a smell throughout the trailer. It's just a new furnace smell. Just open up some windows, get some fresh air through here, and that'll go away. Yeah. After furnace, we'll hit mode again. We'll come into fan, so it'll turn on the air conditioning fan and just move some air around. There's no cooling involved in that. Select your high and low fan for that, of course. Hit mode again after that, come into dry, where I believe it runs the air conditioning fan and the furnace at the same time. Could be wrong. Um, 
hit mode again after that just cycles back to cool comes back around and that's that to turn it off just press and hold that power button and she turns off AV cables here are linked into your sound bar we do have a TV backer here as well so you can mount the TV down in the bottom we've got your antenna outlet so if you hit that button there it turns on your booster you get that little green light clears up your signal also helps with your stereo signal as well above that's going to be your cable outlet and then of course the GFI protected outlet there Storage on the one side here, the sound bar in the center, just the power button right in the middle there turns it on. Hello. And then mode to center right, just cycle through all of that. We'll go into radio, auxiliary. So auxiliary is just right in the side here. TV would be the AV cables right there. DVD, or sorry, the AV cables are gonna be DVD. TV I think is HDMI. Bluetooth, connect to your phone. Right, and then radio. So hit select there and you can get through all of your settings. And then on the left side you got your plays and your seeks. On the right side you got volume control. Speaker zone one is the sound bar itself. Zone two is your outside set of speakers. Alright. Power button, turn it back off. And then for your dinette, just kind of wiggle that table up over to the side. Take your legs, throw them down. And then you can see you kind of got these little ledges there. We're going to sit the table down on that. Take the backs of our cushions, fill in the center, and there's your other bedding area. All right. Now, if you're to get rid of these bottom cushions, you get that little hole there. You can open that up, and that is a little storage compartment there as well. Okay. And then, lastly, is going to be your smoke detector, which is right above the bed here. Right. And that's about it. So if you've got any other questions on the unit, please feel free to give us a call 204-237-7272.